we are going to build double door switch thing, um, call it what you will, which does that. Um, maybe you've got a building that's built on the diagonal, um, which is what I built this for. I actually built this for two next to each other, which is why there's a big hole there. I'm in the process of taking the building down. Um, but there's where the wall was, so it was it was on a diagonal. Or you might have this in the corner of a square building. Um, there's plenty of tutorials out there on getting double doors to work with a um, foot plate, um, pressure plate, wheel. Um, but I, I was having difficulty finding them for corner doors. Um, more specifically, one that had a small enough footprint that I could get two next to each other. Um, I'll have a quick look under here. It, see, it goes up quite wide, but it's it's not. It's long and thin. Um, yes, it goes out a bit there, uh, but I was able to get two in next to each other. So a little bit of tweaking. You can get multiple ones on. Would have been nice to have this plate there and that plate there, but unless someone can correct me, I don't think that's possible. Um, so anyway, I've set it up here. Um, the plates and the doors are on cobble so that we can see from underneath. Uh, the first thing to do is get the doors in. You need to do it from this side. There, correct. Now we know that double doors um, work. One is inverted to the other. Uh, so let's just put those down there, so we know they're in the right place. And we put torches on. One's on. So this this is now open. This one stays shut because this one's the inverted one. So we need to turn this one off and have this light up when we want the door open. So the best way of doing that. Um, actually, let's. It's to put another torch underneath it. Um, technically, the best way is to have um, lit redstone going into it, but if you've got two buttons activating one thing, you can't have lit redstone coming into it. Um, the best way of describing this. If you've got two in and they're both lit, if you press the button which turns this off, it's still going to be lit. So you have to have off redstone going in so that you can light it up with one of the buttons, if that makes sense. Just have a quick over here on what we've done. Um, what we've got is this block here has a redstone torch on the, its back wall. Um, so what we'll do is we put that, which then takes the signal from that plate. Bring it down, bring it down again. This is the block that has the torch in it. I'm an idiot. That's the block that has the torch in it. Obviously we can't put it down there because the torch will, will turn it on and that's bad. do that, the torch 
powers it. So you can see here we've put in a thingy majiga. So now it goes long. Um, we have to have the power of the redstone going straight into the block. Or straight into that block rather. Um, to do that we are going to have to clear out some space. Now again if we look over here you see we drop down and then the power goes in there. If you just bring it across here it won't go in. If we bring it down here and here it won't go in. We have to take it across, out one. Um, the repeaters are the easiest way of getting the power oops back. Um, and we can we can do it without a repeater, but we'll have to take a bigger, wider arc. Oop, fell down the hole. So there, that is now going from there around and into that. If we stand on. Oops. If we stand on the button. It's not doing anything. Why is that not working? Yeah. Don't know why it didn't work with that down there. Presumably it's something to do with one of the fineries of Redstone confuses me. Um, just realised, even though I picked up a load of redstone from clearing that, I don't have enough. Uh, there it is. Grab that as well while we're here. Okay, so that's that button powering that door. While we're here, we might as well get that button to do it as well. And if we look over here, it's pretty straightforward. It comes out the back and joins that repeater. So again, um, now obviously this is the floor level, so it doesn't really matter what we do under here. So there we go. Easy peasy. Chopped. Now, this door is even easier. You can see from that, all we need to do is get the power into there. Now, we do that, it joins up with that and makes all sorts of mess. Um, it's getting the power from under there, it's getting the power from there, so use the repeater. Bam. All we need to do now is get it going in from this side again. Not difficult. We'll have a look over here. Straight repeater going straight in there. Um, so we fill this hole. Now, we could go in this way, but then we'd have to obviously go in, which means the repeaters have to go here, which means the wiring have to come around there, so that's far less efficient. So flat that in there. There you go. Now, you may find, as we've got here, there's a delay. Because um, this one's got two, a repeater there and a repeater there. This side's only got one, a repeater there. So, Not so we've got you'll find probably that one is enough. Occasionally 
Sometimes you might get a bit of lag, you might just strip it onto there. Either way, doesn't matter. Jump's good. There we go. And that can be echoed across. Because this side is so tight and so small, it doesn't matter that this side extends slightly. And there you are. Um, obviously, just run at it, it'll automatically shut. There is a slight delay. Um, it would be better if it was a little bit more instantaneous, but oops, that's what you get for using these repeaters. But they are necessary, unfortunately, due to the smaller, smaller footprint. If anybody can simplify this and make it smaller, then by all means post a link, share us what you got. Um, but until then, I'll speak to you guys later.